Hey folks, this is Red Falcon, and in this video we're going to be talking about rule number two, why you should use an account with limited rights. So this is the slide from the initial introduction. Uh, as just as a review, we're going to be um, talking about why you shouldn't be using an admin account. And uh, in some subsequent videos after this, we're going to show you how to uh, set up a standard account. So probably the first thing you're asking yourself is, well, what's the difference between an admin account and a standard account? So the analogy I like to give is the boss and the office worker. So for example, we'll just pretend this guy here, he's the boss, he represents the admin account. And this guy right here, he's just your regular old office worker, he represents a standard account. So as the boss, he can install software, he can change system settings. He can also access all files on the computer, and that includes files that belong to the office worker here. And in addition to all those, he can do everything that a standard account can do. So our little lonely office worker here, all he can do is run applications and basically move, modify, and delete files that belong to him. And those are typically going to be in non-system folders. So you're probably asking yourself, why is it dangerous to run as an administrator account? So the way operating systems work is the programs inherit the rights of the account using them. So for example, if you're an admin account using a web browser, that web browser can execute code that could potentially install software on your computer. So the example I have here is we have an admin over here using a laptop. He's connecting to a website with malicious code. That malicious code is run in the web browser and because he's an admin, it runs as an admin and it uses those admin rights to install bad code on the laptop. So let's look at this example with a standard account. So as I mentioned, the standard account can install software. So that means that any program that's running as that user can install software as well. So the same example using a standard user, he connects to a website with malicious code. That code is executed as a standard user, but it doesn't matter because the standard user can't install software, that code can't be installed. So what if you need to install a program? So nearly every operating system supports something called account elevation. And you can think of account elevation as the worker asking the boss to do something. So for example, um, say the worker needs um, something purchased. Well, since the worker can't purchase anything for the office, he'll have to ask the boss to purchase something on his behalf. And, you know, there's probably an approval process or something. And once that's done, you know, the worker gets um, whatever he wanted the boss to order. So the same thing works on computers. So say we have a standard user here who wants to install this program. It doesn't matter what this program is. It can be iTunes, uh, Chrome, Firefox, a video game, a spreadsheet program, you name it. So he'll attempt to install the program. The operating system is going to check his um, permissions and say, oh, he can't do this. So what it'll do is it'll prompt for the admin password, which is basically um, the, the worker asking the boss, hey, can you do this for me? Now, if um, it can't supply, if the user can't supply the uh, correct password, then the program's not installed. However, if the user does provide the um, password for the admin account. That admin account, um, that program is run as the admin temporarily, as illustrated here with the um, open lock. So the program's installed as an admin, it gets installed on the system, and then right before um, it goes back to the standard user, that account is, um, that access is locked. So it allows you to install software while using a standard account as if you were running as the admin. And this uh, security prompt is very important because if, say, you have malicious code running on a website, you would actually get that prompt asking you to install something, which hopefully, since you weren't installing anything, you would go and um, promptly close that. So that's the basics on admin accounts versus uh, standard accounts and why you should be using one over the other. Now there's some other best practices as well. So if you ha if you share a computer or um, a device like a Kindle or uh, another tablet, um, you should give everyone their own account. Now I say this for several reasons. One, if you have children, a lot of these systems have the ability to set parental right uh, parental controls 
on that account. So you could basically take a limited uh, standard account and limit it further. And the only way you can do this is if you have multiple accounts set up. Um, another reason is, say there was a uh, piece of malicious code or a virus or something on one of those accounts, it's localized to that one account, so it won't spread to the other accounts. So that's one way to um, say you have a um, one a user that installs, um, tries to download something, get some malicious some malicious programs running on their account that usually won't affect. Um, someone else's account because it's kind of isolated. It's like in its own little sandbox. Another thing is to set a unique password for the admin account. This is very important because if you don't set a password for the admin account, you're just going to get that prompt saying elevate to admin account and basically you just click a button and it lets you install it. Um, you want to have some level of security. Now, most operating systems will require you to set a password for the admin account. But again, I say uh, most because I haven't used every operating system ever made, so there might be some exceptions. Um, in addition to that, there are um, built-in admin accounts. What you'll want to do is before, you'll want to have a unique admin account that you've created. And what you'll want to do is you want to go ahead and change the password for that account and then disable it. There are um, some viruses and malware that will attempt to access like if you're running as a standard user it will try to use the default credentials for that built-in admin account based on known good passwords or if there's no password set it'll just try to use that account so you want to make sure that you disable that account and um, also change the password also um, if you have a guest account go ahead and disable it there's no reason to have a guest account if you feel that you need to have an account that um, guests can use, you can just make a limited account and just use that one instead. Now, if you don't know how to do any of this stuff, don't worry, we'll have some videos later that'll show you how to do this in uh, various operating systems. So, again, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to account management. This is kind of just the surface, but um, generally speaking, if you have an admin account and a standard account and you use that standard account and then elevate yourself to use the admin credentials with a password, um, this will prevent most malicious software from installing. Now, I, I say most because there are exceptions. Um, for example, in a previous slide, I showed you um, how you can elevate your rights. Well, there are certain um, exploits that can... Um, elevate your rights without you knowing it and basically allow programs to install. But we'll talk about that later when we talk about op, um, updating your operating system. So um, just to put, just to take this back to the three animals, the uh, baby chicken here would be a user who uses an admin account and nothing else. So we don't want to be like that. Now the turtle, turtle's a little bit better. Um, maybe he has an admin account and a standard account, but the admin account uses the same credentials as the um, the other account, or they just it doesn't have a password at all. So while it does offer that initial um, barrier of protection, once that's bypassed, all bets are off. So you don't want to be like that. What we want to do is we want to exercise defense in depth. So we want to have a standard account that you use for everything. You want to have a unique password set for the admin account. And you know, you want to use um, your own judgment based on you know what's going on at the time. So for example, if you get prompted to install an Adobe update for Adobe Reader, and well, you don't have Adobe Reader installed, chances are that's that's bad, so you can go ahead and just cancel that. When in doubt, click no. So I hope this has been helpful. I want to thank you for watching. And in future videos, we're gonna sh I'm going to show you how to do some of the tasks that I just uh, explained in the site. So um, again, thank you for watching and be safe out there.